Okay, Mary. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Central United, the church with the heart and the heart in the city. Um, June 10th, 95 years ago, was the uh, anniversary of the United Church of Canada. So we celebrate 95 years of being our church in this country. Let us uh, attend now to the acknowledgement of the territories. We respect the treaties that were made on these lands and acknowledge that Central United Church is located on Treaty 2 lands. On behalf of Central United Church, Brandon, welcome to the traditional homelands of the Dakota, the Anishinaabek, the Oji Cree, the Cree, the Dene, and the Metis peoples. Let us rise and shine and give God the glory. and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of our God. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and Give God the glory, glory, children of our God. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of our God. The call to worship. What is it that calls you here today? Is it a lifelong habit, a quest for holiness, an expectation or an easy choice? Are you seeking? Are you asking? God has found you here. And thank God for the blessing of the divine presence, for as promised, where we gather, Jesus himself is among us. Let us sing uh, God whose almighty word. Your flight, move 
take this prayer to our God, our opening prayer. In times of uncertainty, we can feel powerless. May we choose our responses wisely. May we equip ourselves with knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, and truthful speech. May we be wide open to your possibilities, O God, Embolden us to open our hearts as we worship together and sing your praises, and as we live together reflecting your love widely and deeply in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want you to think about um, the space you're in today. Um, I want to talk about something called liminal space. It comes from a word, um, a Latin word, limen, which means threshold. So uh, what liminal space is, is uh, in between time, between where you are here and uh, where you're going next. And it's kind of a pause time. It might be uh, something that has stopped, like one uh, place of employment has stopped for you, and now you're in a place where you have to think about what will be your next uh, move in life. Uh, lim a liminal moment can also be watching the sunset tonight and uh, feeling the sense of mystery and wonder and awe of God in your life and uh, your purpose in it. A liminal moment is an opportunity to be transformed into something better, to evolve into a better creature uh, than maybe you already are, because I think we're all working toward that. So liminal space is that threshold, that in-between time, and it's a sacred time, it's a time to experience the mystery, the wonder. It's like a waiting room for God to be still and know God. No matter what is going on in your life, to be still in that liminal space and, and hear what it is God is taking you to next. And just be patient and wait. Liminal space, and that's what we're going to think about today. Let us sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thy face. 
faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning, my morning, no mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness ever to me. Pardon for sin and a peace that Testament uh, reading comes from uh, the story Bible, and it's the account of David and Goliath. It's a story not just for children, but for all of us. David lived in the town of Bethlehem. He liked to hear stories about his great-grandmother, Ruth. Ruth had come from a faraway country to live in Bethlehem. David was a shepherd. Each day he took the sheep that belonged to his family and helped them find grass to eat. David liked to sit on the hillsides as he looked after the sheep, and sometimes he made up songs about the sheep, the hills, and about God. Sometimes looking after the sheep was easy, but sometimes it could be hard and dangerous. If one of the sheep got lost, David had to find it. If lions and wolves attacked the sheep, David had to chase them away. David used a sling to fight the lions and the wolves. The sling was made of two strong pieces of string with a patch of leather in between. David put a small stone in the patch of leather and he whirled, around his, whirled it around his head. And we, when he let go of one string, the stone flew out very fast. So David practiced hard until he could hit anything. And David used the sling to protect his family's sheep against wild animals. One day, David's father, Jesse, came to him and said, your older brothers are helping King Saul fight in a war. I want you to take some food to them, David. So David took the food and he walked to where his brothers were and he found that his brothers and all the other soldiers were very much afraid. And they said to him, we are fighting against the Philistines. And they pointed to the other side of the valley where the Philistine army was waiting to fight. And one of the Philistines is a very big man and his name is Goliath. And every morning he comes out and he yells at us. He says, choose one of your men who is brave enough to fight me. And if your man wins the fight, then you will win the war. If I win the fight, then the Philistines will win the war. So the next morning, David saw Goliath come out and yell at the Hebrew army. And Goliath had a big spear in his hand, and he looked very fierce. So David said to King Saul, let me go and fight Goliath. And King Saul said to him, but you're just a boy. How can you fight such a big man? And David responded, I can fight lions and wolves to protect my sheep. I can beat Goliath. God will take care of me. So David picked up some nice, small, smooth, round stones. He put one of the stones in his sling. David ran toward Goliath. Goliath laughed at him when he saw a boy coming up to fight him. 
But David wasn't afraid. You come at me with a sharp spear, David called to Goliath, but I come to you with the help of God. David whirled the sling around his head and out flew a stone that hit Goliath right on the head. Goliath fell down. We won the war, shouted all the Hebrew soldiers, and then they chased the Philistines away. And everybody said, hooray for David. He saved us from the Philistines. And the uh, gospel reading comes from uh, the gospel of Mark. This is a story you've heard many times, and uh, maybe in your situation today, it'll come to you in a different kind of way. It's called Jesus Stills a Storm. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and they said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let us now... uh, have a time of prayer confession. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so often afraid of ideas that confront us, of people who seem different, of challenges we would rather not face. And in response to our fears, we draw in closer. We make barriers and exclude others rather than opening our eyes and our hearts to see as you see and to love as you love. May we be more Christ, be more like our Christ, we pray. And our words of affirmation, God speaks peace and stillness into our fears. God encourages and restores us so that we can see and act clearly as people of faith in God's world. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I turn it over to Ken, and he'll introduce his piece. The piece that I'm going to sing today is uh, different than what is on the PowerPoint that you're seeing today. Uh, So if you want to hear where you walked, you're going to have to tune in next Sunday. Um, This Sunday, uh, I am singing uh, a piece of music that's very, very beautiful and I think appropriate for the Sunday uh, as well. It's It's based on Psalm 42, and it's called, As the Deer Pants for the Water. Silver on 
joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Thank you very much, Ken, and thank you, Mary. It was beautiful. Put your brave on. Put your brave on. Let's continue talking about liminal space. As I said, the word liminal comes from the Latin root limen, which means threshold. The liminal space is the crossing over a space where you have left something behind, yet you're not yet fully in something else. So you're in between. You're waiting to see what's going to happen. You have crossed the threshold into what could become a new normal. The reason I want to talk about this is because I feel that both stories today are about the moments when we are betwixt and between and we don't know what to do. These moments happen often in our lives and I think it is good to know that they are moments of learning. They are moments of opportunity. So we have to be still and wait and be patient through them. In the Gospels, we hear that Jesus often acted in these liminal space moments. Liminal space is a time and a place of transition. It is a time of waiting and not knowing, and maybe you're going through something like that right now in your life. Maybe the world's going through it as we go through this COVID-19 uh, virus. These thresholds of waiting and not knowing are everywhere in life, and they are inevitable. Each ushers in a new chapter of life and can cause a disruption. And each one of us experience, experiences liminal space uh, during our lifetime many times. Liminal space can be a place of fear. It can be a place where we are paralyzed with fear, unable to move because, quite honestly, we do not know what is next. We're in between. If throughout our lifetime we pay attention to these liminal moments, we will come to recognize that we do get through them. We do get through them and in that, recognize that God is with us no matter what. That's a powerful thought. Once we realize this, we fear less, we panic less, becoming more trusting and patient that God is there with us, we're not alone, and God will help us act. 
Uh, liminal moments can happen when we change our geography. Jesus does this over and over. He goes from city into the wilderness. He goes from the valley up a mountain. He goes from shore out to sea. He does this because, because it is in these liminal spaces that he finds the peace and the calm that he needs to continue on, to be still and listen for God in these times. Jesus uh, also acts in the liminal situations that are socio-political. What I mean by this is those situations that challenge the characters involved, either because of their social status or their religious or po political belief systems. He takes us out of our normal comfort zones, or what we think is normal, our comfort zones, so we can experience the other, and in doing so, learn that it is not as we had feared. Here are a few examples of Jesus. He eats with sinners and those considered unclean. He preaches to Gentiles and Jews. Jesus welcomes prostitutes. Jesus talks with Samaritans. Jesus heals through touch those considered untouchable. Jesus stands in those in-between spaces and shares with both sides, alluding to the fact that God is in these spaces, in God, with God, and through God, the boundaries and the spaces that we create do not really exist. Jesus uh, meddles. He's a meddler. He meddles with the borders we create to break them down. He teaches us that those in-between places and times that we often fear are actually places where God will talk to us, will speak to us, will get messages if we might listen. If we might listen. The United Church of Canada has a long and proud history of standing up for injustices in society. It is part of what defines us. We are a church that stands in the liminal space of society and listens for the word of God to speak and direct us. Often we are at the forefront of justice situations which puts us on the firing line as others have yet to come to the same understanding. They're not there yet. We stand firm, though, because we are aware that God is with us and we're not alone. And as our new creed states, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Liminal space can be that place where we put our brave on, we get courageous. And what I mean by that is those situations where things are, are really changing and we're awaiting the new and God challenges us to act and to act now. A most recent case of this would be the death of George Floyd. People are outraged with again another death of a black man at the hands of the police. The protests are forceful and they're very real. Even some police are protesting. They're going down on one knee. The issue is racism, an issue that pervades all countries of the world. It is about the treatment and discrimination of others because of their race. All people of the world are saying to themselves this day, this is not who we are as a world. This is not how we act. This is not how we treat people. This is not how I would want to be treated. God called the people to act and they are acting. We see it, we feel it, and maybe we're part of it. On uh, June the 4th at 1 p.m., um, many businesses temporarily closed their doors for eight minutes and 46 seconds to mourn together and remember George Floyd. Maybe finally, Finally, we are entering a new era of race relations in our world, 
in every country. If you look back over time, it is in those times when civil liberties are threatened or in times when people are restricted from having certain liberties that the gospel of Jesus Christ, the teaching of God, rise up in our consciousness. God calls us to put our brave on. That story of David and Goliath we might know as a child's story, but it is, uh, for all of us, we know that. Goliath is a bully. He's loud, he's large, he's bombastic, uh, meaning he's pompous, pretentious, and grandiose. He thinks he's the best. He's better than all the rest. He doesn't think that anyone could defeat him. David is the youngest of a large family, often discounted by his older brothers. He is the gopher, the one who was sent to do errands while his older brothers did important work. David is the youngest of the family who surprisingly has been anointed by Samuel to be the next king of Israel. His family, although present for his anointing, make not much of it. In fact, it places young David in jeopardy with his older brothers because they are jealous of him and they believe they should be, they should be the anointed ones. David escaped the sarcasm and the jealousy of his siblings by tending the family's sheep herd. Yes, he'd go away to the quiet place. He loved the solace of the field, a place where there were sheep, uh, God, and himself. David knew God very well, as he spends a great deal of his time in liminal space, in God's waiting room. As Goliath hurls insults in efforts to intimidate, David hurls them right back at him. He knows how this goes. He has older brothers. Goliath, so full of his own ego, has no idea that he is going down. David is so full of trust in God's design on his life that he knows he is going to win with God's help. That is putting your brave on. David is a shepherd boy, living his life in that liminal geographic space, and God speaks to him. God calls David out of the waiting room into action. He puts his brave on. He puts on the whole armor of God. He stands against the giant, not just for himself, but for the greater good, which in his case is the future of his country, Israel. We are seeing in the United States of America God calling on the people of that nation, calling on them to stand up, put their brave on, act, calling the Goliath that is racism to back down. And we're hearing it in Canada also and all over the world. When we consider the story of the storm, Jesus and the storm, what we notice is that once again, Jesus takes his disciples into that liminal space. He desires to get into the boat and cross the Sea of Galilee. This is a geographical move from shore to sea. Jesus also decided that instead of waiting till the morning to travel more safely, he travels in that liminal space between daylight and nightfall. When we are alert to these ways that Jesus operates, we can anticipate that some threshold will be crossed. The storm comes, and that storm represents all of our doubts and all of our fears. The storm is all that paralyzes us when things are changing and we don't know where we're going. What's ahead? In this case, the disciples are paralyzed. They're totally panicked. They're going to die, they think. Jesus, in what could almost be considered a case of overacting, sleeps while they panic. 
they act as if, as I said, this is their ending, this is their death. We are going to die. But Jesus knows differently. Jesus is the master of presenting stories that have endings that nobody expected. He slew the giant storm with be still, be still and know God, be still and know God. And through his actions, he teaches when you have times of not knowing, of liminal space, be still, be still and know God. Fear not, God is with you. David was able to slay Goliath because God was his silent partner. Am I, am I fearful of what is to come? Are you fearful of what is to come? Are you burdened by the trials of life? Are you in the liminal space of not knowing what is coming next? Are the storms of life too much for me, too much for you? Let us all be still and know God and be calm and listen. God will show us how to put our brave on. Thanks be to God for courage. Amen. Let us come to God now with uh, this prayer. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, O God, and may they drop like stones into a pool, rippling beyond ourselves, beyond our friends, families, and communities. Across the boundaries of location, time, and space, further than we can know. May our prayers change us. May they make us peaceful, hopeful, patient, that your will be done on earth. May our prayers change us. May they make us ask questions, challenge the status quo, make us angry even that your will be, your will be done on earth. May our prayers change us so that we think and we plan and we act in anger, in patience, but always in love to play our part in creating the changes for which we pray. Hear our prayers, O God, and be with all those who struggle this very moment in whatever way. Give them direction in this liminal space they may be in. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let's sing the hymn together. Oh, 
sacrifice for sake us. Are we tempted to despair? Jesus' strength will shield our weakness and will find new courage there. What a privilege uh, we have to share in God's mission to adapt and uh, be responsive to the needs all around us. Many uh, have offered their financial gifts to support the ministry and service of this church through the years and especially through the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you all for your ongoing support to Central and the United Church of Canada. Let us pray. Like David, our experience prepares us for the next step and give us gifts and abilities to share. Take our offerings that we have given, that they may be used to demonstrate your care for those who are needy, poor, or oppressed. We offer these gifts and the giftedness of this community to the service of human kindness within the communities in which we live. Our country and the world through our local church and the mission and service of the United Church of Canada. Bless our offerings and bless those who offer them. Amen. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Let us sing the hymn together.
grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. So good to have you with us this morning. As we continue our worship through our lives beyond this community, let us be brave and courageous to open our hearts wide. Go in peace. Amen. We shall go out with joy. Oh, 